Right, mate, thanks very much for doing this. No well. Another big name. Um, want to start off with the band, mate. It used to look like Fir Park in the winter, but now it is simply lovely. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Bit of blind, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it is, it's lovely, mate. It is, I, uh, it went well. Same as Fir Park pitch, it's looking like that now. That's it's it. probably Turn best pitch in the league, same, <clears throat> as, same as the Barnet. I want to go back, right back to the start, mate. Um, grew up in Springburn. <coughs> yes. How was that growing up, working class background? Was, what was it, red ash pitches? Red Your ash dad's pitches. Your dad said he Aye. I, I used to wear my mum's high heels, but that's a story for another day. Well, that's no surprise. <laughs> but, uh, no, what was it, was, that like? it wasn't very working class. There wasn't many people worked, to be fair. But, it wasn't um, on a... No, it was, it was a, a tough upbringing, but nothing but fond memories. Um, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a, obviously, people weren't uh, affluent, but everybody was in the same boat, and I think that was just the way it was for most people. And what would it be, just football all the time? Constantly. Um, just usual stuff, obviously, before Xboxes and... Your mom and that used to just kick you out the house and mm -hmm. you were out all day and you played whatever you played, tig, hide and seek, football, whatever, just to keep you going. And it's, it was a great, a great upbringing and obviously it's something that, that doesn't really happen uh, now, but it's understandable why it doesn't. But <clears> see that, like, back then, there was free access to football all the time, you could play on pitches all the time. What do you think now when you see that people need to pay like 50 quid a month to, to play football? I think... <sighs> would, you, would your mum and dad be able to afford that back then? No, 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 no chance. But... There was there was free access, but there is now, but you just wouldn't let your kids go out. Mm. You know, we went out for a young age, played with people at all different ages, and you were always there or thereabouts. You played in the street, you didn't need a pitch. You now they need mm -hmm. pitch with nets and everything needs to look good. Referee Academy stuff. Uh -huh. They need the best of gear. We didn't, we didn't bother with things like that. And it is big money for, for even the boys' clubs now. It's, it's all about making money and... They try and do it right and be professional, but I think we should go back to, you know, players want to play football. It's no, I think we're a wee bit overcoached at times, but that's the way it's went, and there's not much we can do about it. Back then, with your mates, were you always <coughs> the best player? Were you always the one that would? <coughs> I think if you asked asked them, they'd, every one of them would say they were the best players. I think that was just the way it was. You would never admit to it, mm -hmm. um, but we all thought we were the best. We were all no bad, and I was obviously the best player because I went and done. Played football. Uh -huh. <laughs> played football and they didn't. <laughs> but why, why do you think there is a lack of scheme, <coughs> scheme boys that, that come through now? Because see, when I played younger, Snoddy was fairly Gallagher, mate. Aye. I loved Gallus is in and bold as brass. We'd be getting beat 3 0, Scotland, he'd be trying nutmegs on it. Aye. Archie Gemmo coming after the game, raging 3 0, doing Snoddy, but, huh, but what about my nutmeg? Do you know what I mean? They were always <coughs> the ones that would try things. I think it's, I think it's just football's overcoached. I think that's gone where you can't, uh, no, no misbehave. I know what you mean by Snoddy was like, just mad uh -huh. and didn't care and I think new kids are like <coughs> make a mistake and you see their heads drop straight away, it doesn't matter what age they're uh -huh. or they want to be, everything needs to be perfect and and that's not the way fit was. You want everybody to be different, but when they're all coached kind of the same way, you can see that players are they're all similar and you you need somebody to be that wee bit different to stand out. So when you went <coughs> first went to Motherwell, did they let you go and play? Let you try what you wanted to try? Uh, at the start they did and then throughout my as long as I can remember, I, I always pass, that's all here, and that's a thing that really used to annoy me, mm -hmm. because I was dribble, I was a dribbler, mm -hmm. and I was good at dribbling, and I used to always think, well, I'm in here because I can dribble. Stop telling me to pass the ball. Obviously, I didn't get it, I was only a young boy, but I think you should let somebody with that kind of ability that's good at dribbling accept that you're going to lose it. Accept that nine, eight, eight out of ten, you lose it one or two, you maybe score a goal or set somebody up, and that could be the difference. Mm -hmm. But if you keep <coughs> saying, pass, 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 we're going to have a load of players that just pass and don't take any risks. And I think you need to, you're not going to win games if you don't risk. And Jake, that's why we struggle to <coughs> produce flair players? I think, aye. Um, because, as I said, it's kind of, even at 10, ten year old now, or younger, kids are in academies at six, mm -hmm. and they're all... I don't know what they're all like, but I'd imagine most of it's like trying to create a perfect environment to make the perfect player instead of letting them develop and add different skills but without discouraging them for, for, being, for doing what they're good at. And at Motherwell, was there, a, was there a guy that really believed in you that, that says, go and you do your own thing, you're different to, for the rest of the boys, go and, go and play the <coughs> way you want to play? Aye, when I was <coughs> playing in like the under-14s, 15s, the big boy Paul Smith kind of accepted that 
that's the way I was. I was the wee gallus boy for the scheme. That uh -huh. For all I was, I was never in trouble. I always behaved myself, but I didn't take any any rubbish. And people were aware that I wasn't I wasn't mad or anything, but I could act as if you know uh -huh. I was daft at times. But he he just he accepted that and kind of tried to just let me express myself. And I think I think that's crucial. If you've got somebody like that, then you need to let them let them be yourself before they can you know learn different different sides of it. Do you think it was good for you to uh, <clears throat> come through at Motherwell opposed to like a Celtic or a Rangers? I think for me personally, aye, because it was like at Motherwell they realised that, that I had a good talent and f for all I say, I was always pass, pass, pass. I was still encouraged to do what I was good at um, and I think that had I been at Rangers or Celtic, there would have been another player just like me, probably, probably better at that age maybe would have stopped me from progressing. I mean, I made my debut at Motherwell when I was 17, and I played week in, week out, I think it was 18 or 19, and that just didn't happen at that time. I think the one coming through with me at the time was Sean Maloney, and played against Sean for under-18s, under-21s, and he was by far the best player going about, but it was so hard for him to get into that Celtic team at the time that by the time I was 20, I was away down to England, and Sean was just kind of making his breakthrough. And, and, and that was like the parallels of being at Motherwell and being at Celtic now, Sean just went on to have a great career and it just took him a wee bit longer to maybe come into the the public eye. See, when you were just <coughs> breaking into the first team, obviously 16, 17, were you still hanging about with your mates in aye, spring, but aye. Head, and would you be out all the time? Aye, I, I never, I didn't <coughs> drink. I wasn't a drinker when I was younger. Right. Um, I'd go, I'd go out and no drink and yeah, my pals were always encouraging. They, they, they accepted that that was a choice I'd made in order to become a, a football player. And it wasn't until I got into full time that I realised that everybody drinks. So is that <laughs> I when thought you started? They didn't. I, I started when I played, I'd say when I played in the first team. I started right? going out on a Saturday after, you know, it was like a reward for, for getting a game. And I felt though at that time that it was it was more acceptable for me to go out because I'd played on the Saturday and I'd have obviously the, the week's training to be fine, but I never, well, no, often and drunk at inappropriate times, I would say. I'd, the one time with Terry Butcher, I think we had a team night out, and he he led it, and he had his own shots and all that, and we were training the next day. But apart from that, it was something I would never do. So when you first broke in, uh, <coughs> the first team with big characters in that team? Aye, there was, we had, John Boyle just came in, I think, and he was spending fortunes on John Spencer and Andy Gorham, guys like that, and buying buying players for teams in England, uh -huh. um, and they were all like, you couldn't really, I, I, I didn't care, like I was, I was young, that Gallus, I didn't care, I used to try, and chip, I used to try and chip Andy <laughs> Gorham in training and all that, and uh -huh. because I was brought up a Celtic fan, it was, I'd have a bit of banter and all that, I mean, I, I just didn't care, I just thought, I'm, I'm good enough here, I'm, I'm not going to Did he like that? Did he like that? Because he used to, he used to call me a wee cheeky, cheeky <laughs> bastard and that, but. <laughs> I, I, I just, I did, I respected them all, every one of them I did, um, but they, they were they were hard on you, that was just, that was just football, you were going in with grown men, didn't they, some of them liked the wee cheeky, cheeky guy and others didn't, they? and that was just it, I didn't care, yeah. I just went in and I wanted to show them that I was a good player, and, and I think, as I said, I respected them, and I think they liked me for that, um, but if you stepped out of line, like, you used to nearly be every day, there'd be a young boy in the treatment room because Sean Taylor would smash them. Yeah. For, for just because they're young. And you're <laughs> just like to toughen you up, on huh? your shin, aye, and that was it. You just didn't get away <laughs> Did with you it, meg him? Because I spoke to David Clarkson who said that the bo you know, uh, just megs constantly. Probably, probably. <laughs> but I used to get kicked for doing that as well, but uh -huh. I didn't care. That was part of me expressing myself, and there was nobody going to stop that. And how was Billy Davis? Was he good at protecting you? Um, <clears throat> Billy was he was, tough on you as well? No, Billy was tough, but Billy was my under-15s manager. When I was at Motherwell, he used to come and coach the under 15s, and then he made quite a sharp rise into being manager. And uh, so I knew him when I came in. So a, a lot of the guys were not fearful of him, but he was he was uh, very meticulous, Billy. Um, he could be hard on you, um, but he was always great with me. He played. He obviously gave me my debut, and his training was excellent. He was a great manager and, and brilliant for me at the time. Um, but no, I just used to have a good, a good bit of banter with Billy, it wasn't there were times obviously in training, one time the ball came out, I was playing left, because I, when I was younger I was a 
left mid was and then I was told oh you'll never be quick enough to play left mid so we'll try it centre mid we'll try it left back so I played left back in a practice match I think it was only about 16 or 17 and the goalie rolled the ball out to me and I went to control it and I went right under my foot out for a throw in <laughs> and he goes he started screaming, you've got five minutes, I swear to God, I'm going to phone Betty, come pick you up. <laughs> five Betty minutes, Betty was a uh, uh, PA, he's PA, he's assistant. <laughs> and I went, oh no, don't give me the ball. And left back, he was just trying to play it for the back, get rolling. I was like, oh no. He, so he, he, could, he could cut you down, and I was terrified that day. And what did no he think of your personality? Because he, that was, again, David <clears> Clarkson was saying, up the gyms, boys would be squatting. You'd squat them and they'd get an arse in their face. <laughs> <laughs> I think he liked it because, uh, as I said, I know I knew him for being under 15, so I'd, I'd, have a, I'd have a wee bit. You know what it's like when you're younger, you uh, don't care. Just you're kind of similar to me. It's, uh, like, it's not that you're disrespectful to people, but you just don't realise that what you're doing is maybe no appropriate. Aye, but, we'd but back then, mate, people would like that. Aye, aye. aye. No, see if well, somebody, we, do, a young boy does that, everyone's like, oh, he's a bad character. But we used to keep we used to keep budgies in the away dressing room at Mother. <laughs> see, in the away dressing room, <laughs> in the back cupboard that used to be where you kept all the kit. Uh -huh. There's toilets now. But we, one, two of the boys says, we'll go, go and get some budgies. <laughs> so we keep the budgies and... And who so, was feeding them yous? No, aye, we fed them and somebody took them home at the weekend <laughs> and, brought <them> <laughs> and brought them back. Aye, so, sorry, yeah. so, one, so we used to let them out in the dressing room uh -huh. and hope nobody opened the door. So uh -huh. the birds are flying about in the dressing room, <laughs> the door opens, Billy Davis comes in. And we're all like, oh no. And he just goes, oh, use her off your head, and walked out. <laughs> Did he? Uh -huh. So we had to used to catch, catch them to put them back. Uh -huh, so we kept budgies in the away dressing room. And then did you move into the first team dressing? I did, no, we had not I did, we... Uh, I had my two years, I can't remember, but and maybe under Eric Black, and maybe Eric Black when he came in. <clears throat> See, when you first started playing with the first team, did, did, did you love that, that, that stage to go and play against Aye. these top players? Because you'd, you'd always have, at some stage of the week, maybe a Tuesday or a Thursday, you'd have a practice match. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't always be training with them, but they'd need the players to make your numbers up, and I used to love it, I used to love and go and let them see how good I was. Uh -huh. So Terry Butcher came in after Billy Davis. Um, <clears throat> were you excited to work with? Obviously he's a big name. Were you excited when he, he got the Motherwell job? He came in, Eric Black was after Billy and Terry Butcher was his assistant. So it was it was great. You know, like, it was a wee bit because of his size and, and who he was, you were intimidated. And if he shouted, you kind of look. But he, he was never... I know Scotty gave you a few stories about him, but that could have been anybody with Scotty, because that's just the, the kind of guy we Scotty is. <laughs> just fight somebody uh, yeah. So, but big Terry for us, we, Eric Black had left, we went into administration, we had a load of young boys, and he was never ever, never, he'd never go mad, or like in training, everything was encouragement. Like yeah. if you had a bad pass, and it, but you never really committed to it, he'd say, I'd rather you had it 10 yards past him than 10 yards short, just commit, just go, everything was encouragement. A couple of times he'd come in and he'd maybe shout, rant and rave, and then by the time he's got to the end, he'd go, nah, nah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. I, I, you don't deserve that. He's all young, trying to give me everything you've got. I, I, I was out of order. Really? So he was, yeah, never, so was that aye, side to him as well, huh? was, he? Wasn't, he wasn't nuts. Like, he didn't shout all the time. He would shout, but no aggressively, do you know what I mean? He would, he would shout maybe for the reaction. As I said, he'd come in and go mad. But then he would calm down a wee bit and he'd maybe apologise for going about it that way because we were all young. And did he bring <coughs> your game on? Was it, did he help you improve as he a player? Did. He did, because as I said, it was all encouragement. It mm -hmm. was encouragement. Um, he never ever, I'd say, he never really told me what to do in terms of don't, don't do this. It was always go and, go and play, go and express yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it was great for me. It's the same again, I was cheeky as anything, but... I think he, but, uh, he liked that. As I said, I was never disrespectful. A couple of times I'd maybe shout and train him if he gave a decision, but and that was it, it was huh? never there was never any you know arguments or that. I didn't. That's not my that's not my game. That. So see, when you were playing and you were doing well, <coughs> did, was it always in your back back of your mind to try and get a move? No, wasn't it? I just I just wanted to play football. Wasn't it that that first? Obviously, when I started playing in the first team, then I was getting a bit of attention, and this team were watching, that team was watching, and. It was just, I wasn't desperate to leave until it came about and I thought, well, I quite fancy that. Because I knew that, 
It was again going back to the thing about Celtic Rangers when you're younger. You're, do you want to go and be a youth player or a reserve player in a, in a bigger team, or do you want to play every week? You know, I wanted to play every week, mm -hmm. and that was that was a benefit to me being at Mother. I, I could play every week. Sometimes I'd be rubbish for maybe two or three games, but because that one game you'd maybe do well, or because the squad wasn't big enough, you kept your place. Mm -hmm. So it was you, you were learning. You learned for your, your bad games, and you took it on. And I, so I was one that didn't bother. Didn't think, oh, I've been rubbish today. I used to go, oh, that wasn't good enough, but. I'll get next week and I'll put it right. So you were allowed to hear a bad game, whereas Definitely. Celtic and Rangers, if you go and get one chance you and you hear a bad, bad game, match, 10 you minutes. Uh -huh. you know what I mean? If you come on as a sub with Celtic Rangers, you're judged on that 10 minutes quite rightly, but you're not really allowed to make mistakes. You're, you need to be ready. Uh -huh. If you make mistakes, it's like, eyes ah, not ready. Uh -huh. Whereas at Motherwell, it was going, going play, and we were obviously a smaller club where we didn't have as much attention, and it was always kind of highlights people saw, unless it was live games, which... At that point, against uh, both the old firm, we, we were doing well. Do you ever come at a point, see, when you're playing with like a mother, do you ever come at a point where you think, right, I'm too good for this now? I no. need, uh, never, no? Nah. No. I don't, I don't ever, I never, I've never thought that. No. Nah. Anywhere I've been, I've never thought I'm too good for this. I just, it is just it money, comes. Is it money then, when you get no. offered? No. No, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. It was the opportunity to play at a higher level. It wasn't, but no, because I thought I'm too good for it. It was because I thought, I want to try and see if I can be good enough to play at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Know that I'm too good because it, that was all my mates, and that was we were we, the club had went through a hard time, so I wasn't in a rush to leave. It was just that the teams were coming and watching, and it was inevitable I was going to leave. It was just it was just the way it was. I was doing well, and um, it was just if I never went the time I did, it would have been either the January or the year later. So when did you first realise that that's me? I'm I, I'm going to be leaving Motherwell. Um, the the last day of the transfer window, I think the whole summer. I think maybe the year before there'd been teams coming to watch me. I think Bre Preston bid for me in January. There might have been a bid the summer before for a team abroad. Um, but even then, so Preston bid, and I thought, nah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Mm -hmm. They bid about a half a million, I think, and Everton tried to take me on loan, and the club told me about it and says they've. Tried to take you on loan. Preston have put a bid in for you, but we're not selling you, and I went fine. No, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was happy. Uh -huh. I was happy. And then that summer, I'd done well. I was in, this, in and about the Scotland squad, and I just thought, if a chance comes up, I think I'm ready now to try and try and see if I can play at a higher level. Uh -huh. All summer it was Celtic. Celtic were going to come in. Celtic were going to do this, and I think Martin O'Neill was maybe having a bit of bother with the with the board that might have been coming up to his last year. So. Maybe two or three days before the window shut, it was no, there's there's, there's nothing there. It's it's not going to happen. And they, and then they tried to take me on loan. Everton was the same. That was all summer. They were going to go and spend four million on Sean Davis, or spend the four million on three or four players. Right. So all summer it was <coughs> Sean Davis is coming in. I think he failed his medical or whatever reason. Never went. So on the last day they came in. For, they came in and made a bid, and Mother rejected it. And, I spoke to the manager and the chairman and says, look, it's no, I don't even know what they're offering me financially. I says, it's the Premier League in England and you need to give me this opportunity to go and, and we got a deal sorted and that, and that was it.